All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining me for module two, session one. Everybody went through module one. We went over a lot about hiring and just what is a job, what is a business, where are we taking it? Now it's time that we've determined that you have a business, you want to work on it, and you want to grow it. So we're going to go over step by step over the next few months what to do really to get your business firing on all cylinders for the year 2021. A lot of challenges ahead, a lot of change in environment, a lot of things going on. But one thing that never changes is good core business principles. The idea of how to properly run a business and things that you must have in order to do so. So one of the most important things in business to have is an idea of where you're headed. Anytime we call them plans, guides, you know, business plans, marketing plans, all these different things, having the idea of where we're going before we're going so that we know what steps to take. So first off, the, the name of this module is what is a marketing plan? So what is a marketing plan? If you know, drop it in the comments, what you think a marketing plan is, describe what you feel a marketing plan is and let us know. And uh, I'd love to chat with anybody down in the comments, definitely throw it in there. If you have any questions, throw them in the comments on YouTube as well. Happy to answer those questions for you. So my name is Sean Patrick Maloney. I'm the host here. I also own Momentum Realty, a brokerage on the South Shore as well as Rhode Island. And I own a company named Doth Company. We are a business consulting business. Love to help you grow your business. If you hear this stuff, you feel like it's just a little more than you can take on, reach out to me and I'd love to do a little bit of coaching with you and uh, consulting and really getting your business going. Also a podcast host. My socials are on the bottom, but they also will be at the end of this slideshow. First off, a marketing plan is a written guide to actionable events and details to ensure your marketing is successful. So what it is, is no longer are we just saying when someone says, how do you want to market everywhere? Where do I want to go on as much stuff as I can? How much money you want to spend? Whatever I have in the bank right now, we're getting out of that. And we're saying, I'm going to spend so much money on so many different avenues. I'm going to put it to these people. These are my target audiences. This is what the perfect client looks like all that great stuff in one big plan. So that way there, we're not just staring at random and we're working our way towards what we're doing. So some of the most important elements of a marketing plan. First, I'm gonna read them, then I'm gonna break them down a little bit. Business goals, marketing goals, target audience, messaging, strategy, tactics, budgets, and timing. When you're looking at these, when you're looking at these, you really want to look at each one individually. So business goals, what are your sales goals? Where are they going? How are you looking to take the company, right? So exact things, whether it be uh, by doing my marketing plan, I look to generate seven leads, which will run to one deal, which will run to $30,000 in revenue. As specific as you can be on all these is really important. So business goals and marketing goals, they're similar in some aspects, but the marketing goal is the actual goal of the thing. The business goal is more of the idea of how much money and things you want to make off of it. The target audience. Who is the perfect target audience? You want to think, I, I know a lot of people, let's back up one sec. A lot of people, they'll think to themselves, I want to market to everybody. Of course, I want to market to everybody because say for myself, I sell houses, right? Why not market to everybody? Everybody needs a house. Well, it comes down to the concept of that marketing costs money, right? It costs physical money to buy marketing. So if you buy marketing, you're going to be spending money. So you need to put your marketing money where it's at best use. We don't want to just suddenly market to every single person and realize we're marketing to a whole bunch of people, say for my business, where they're not even of age to buy a home, or maybe they're not even in the idea of buying a home. So the target audience... In certain industries like mine, you have to be careful because we do have fair housing and we have to follow certain laws. But in most businesses, you're looking at who is the perfect person. And honestly, you know, depending on what you're doing, say you were a company that sold gum, you might be thinking, okay, a 15 year old kid that likes to you know, ride the bus that happens to do this. The more you know about that target audience, the, the more you can be where they need to be, right? So if I know I'm looking to go to younger people, I'm probably going to go into different places than I'm going to go if I wanted to go to older people. So knowing that target audience helps out. Your messaging. 
your brand messaging. So there's lots of different messaging that goes on in branding and let's break down some. So one of my favorite ones would be the makeup company Maybelline. When they show the woman or whoever coming down, they say, maybe it's her or maybe it's Maybelline. What do they mean by this? Why do they say that? Well, what they mean is maybe she's beautiful or maybe it's that she's using our products and that's why she looks so good, right? So a lot of times people don't realize when they see stuff like that, that, that that's actually the branding. Like that's bringing that into that person's mind that you know, maybe she looks good, but maybe if I wore that makeup, I'd look just as good. Another one, you know, Nike, just do it, right? Like they're saying that they're for sports people and they're saying that anything's accomplishable. So the just do it method is what they're trying to get across to their people. But a clear message is going to get you way better results than not having clarity. Strategy. Strategy is going to give the idea of where's and the hows of what you're reaching out to, right? So knowing where the right people are is part of your strategy. So when we're looking at the target audience and we say, okay, looking for a younger demographic, I might be wanting to be on the TikToks. I might be wanting to be on places like that. Whereas on other times I might say to myself, part of my strategy is going to be doing mixers at local bars and talking real estate, right? Depending on what my goal is, my strategy is gonna change. So you really want your strategy to match what you personally are trying to do. And then tactics. Tactics are things that you know that are successful, such as when we post, we're going to use emojis. When we post, we're going to use hashtags. We're going to post, or when we do our thing, the tactic is we want guerrilla marketing. We want people to feel like they found us organically. We want them to feel like they don't have marketing to them, that our things are just really helpful guides. Whatever your idea of how you're going to communicate what and where you're going to have to have tactics to get it there. Budget, budget's one of the ones that a lot of people skip out on. When people look at the budget, a lot of times they just will not like pay attention to like exactly how much they're spending, right? Now, mind you, ROI, so return on investment, it's one of the most important things when it comes to marketing, right? So if you give someone a dollar, they give you $5 back. You certainly would give them two for 10 and so on and so forth. So knowing the budget is important, but also knowing when to expand the budget is important as well. You can't just suddenly make money and just, oh, okay, I'm going to whip it all back in there and pray to God it works. But you can say to yourself, okay, I need to increase this budget because of budgetarily, the way I looked at it was this many sales and I'm doing better. Because remember, the budget that you create is going to, as you get more mature as a company, factor in the idea of what your average ROI is. So that way you can make an educated decision before you actually run the ad set. And then timing. This one is absolutely miserably done by companies. You see people that spend all their time, like say, for instance, how many emails do you get around Christmas or New Year's from companies that it's like got no value to it. It's during time that you consider personal time. And it's just like, why are you selling to me today, right? Versus timing when we have new age things like remarketing and pixels and UTM parameters and all these different cool technologies that allow us to know when people are looking at things, timing can be perfect. So we, we know this from Amazon or any other big box store. When you go look at something, they know at that point that you looked at it and they know the timing is now. But we also need to know the timing. If I'm an ice cream place, right? I certainly won't want to run a coupon in the middle of August unless I need to. Why am I going to run a coupon in August? But then I'll flip the equation. I'm an ice cream shop down Cape Cod. It's August. I better run an ad because I need to get those vacationers that are passing through to come to my place over other places. So knowing the timing, right? So again, my mom, she's right here in Pembroke, Massachusetts and her ice cream shop. We don't need to run an ad in August. Everyone is out front, right? When do we run things like that? We give away all the ice cream at the end of the year as an appreciation event to remind people that we appreciate them. The timing on that is perfect. It helps us clean out the coolers. It helps them have a free ice cream. It helps everyone feel good. My mom and um, my brother who run the company, they spend a lot of money to make that event happen. It's no different than a coupon. A lot of people say, oh, they're just giving away the trash. Truth is we bring in lots of orders to do so. 
but knowing the timing, because again, her business, why would you run it in August? That's not really a need to get more people, but in a highly competitive marketplace, such as Cape Cod, you suddenly need now to know August. So that's one of the things that I want to point out, right? Is a lot of times, a lot of people will want to know what other companies are doing. While it's important to research and see what others are doing, it's important important to know your own business, your own goals, your own tactics, strategies, and marketing, because if you don't, you can get caught doing what someone else is doing and not always does it lead to success. So failure. By failing to prepare, you're preparing for failure. You can't define success without a guide to what success is. This is a really important slide to me because a lot of people, they don't make these plans, right? They don't actually ever plan it and they're throwing from the hip and they're wondering why nothing is going the way that it seems like it should. Now, some of you out there may have a great business plan. You may know exactly where it is. You may be perfectly on there, but without that business plan, if I just said, how many houses do I wanna sell this year a lot? Well, how do I measure whether I succeeded at selling a lot or not? It would only be in relation to what I mentally feel, right? Like so. Is 10 houses a lot? Is 20 houses a lot? Is 50 houses a lot? Is 100 houses a lot? Well, if we had thrown a goal like 100 houses, it sounds like a lot of houses, but then we break down that goal and we say, in order to do that, I need to sell 8.2 or so houses per month. It actually breaks the goal down and it gives me a defining level of success. As I miss by months, I can start to realize I am not on a successful path. If I just said sell a lot of homes, one month I sold seven, the next I sold six, the next I sold nine, then I sold seven again, I'm not on my 100 goal. But yes, is that a decent amount of houses? Of course, so how would we know that we didn't succeed? Without that plan, we don't have that ability to see what true definite success would be. So some key concepts when creating your marketing plan. I'm gonna read them down and we're gonna break them down. The document's dynamic, not static. Failing to reach a goal is not failure. The time to start is now. Be realistic, but don't be afraid to reach. Be willing to look at what others are doing, okay? So let's break these down. So the document is dynamic, not static. What does that mean? It means as you're working your way along, you notice a massive ROI somewhere, you decide you wanna change it, that's perfectly fine. But as you change it, change the document too. Stay up to date with where it's at and getting people the information. Like, because remember, as you grow a company, right? There's a reason they call it an organization, right? Because having a highly organized organization is actually the key to success. So when you're going to be collaborating with others, when you don't update documents, you don't let them know changes are happening and then they don't end up on the same page as you because your plan says otherwise. So don't set your, you know, employees or subcontractors up for failure by not letting them know what's going on. Next up, failing to reach a goal is not failure. So I really like this one. I just picked this up the other day from somebody else, actually. I was just reading a book and I heard it and I, I really liked it because it's like a lot of us don't want to put a plan together, right? We don't want to put a goal. We want to say a lot of houses. Why? Because it allows us to fail without being mad at ourselves, right? But for some reason, there's been like this thing in everyone's head. I don't know whether, I think it's pretty much school that did it to you. Um, school where you, you know, you pass fail. I think that did it to you. Um, but it's like, understand that you set a goal. If you don't make it, it's okay. You just didn't make your goal, but you failed to make a goal, then you failed to launch. Failure to launch leads to more loss than failure to reach a big goal. Failure to reach a big goal usually means you still did pretty well, especially if your goals were lofty because the closer you come to them, the more you did. So just keep that in mind. Don't beat yourself up. You're great. You're awesome. Look in the mirror, smile, say some positive affirmations every day, pay attention to things, turn off the news, get out of other people's world, stop asking losers what they think of your business. Make sure to talk with other entrepreneurs and make sure to follow people who want to help you and want to guide you. Take for instance here, I know the people that are here today or the people that are watching this in the future, I know you care about your business. You wouldn't be here if you don't. And you can know that I care about your business as well because I'm actually not getting paid to do this. I did this for the Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce. 
decided to put it on YouTube so more people could have it. But I did it because I knew people were in need right now. I knew people are in a very dark spot with a lot of things going on in the news, not a lot of promising things being said out there. But the truth is, that's just the big world trying to keep you down. The time to start is now. Even if you were starting a new business, I know COVID, blah, 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 but we are going to have the best times ever after this. Because remember, there's been a great purge of business. Competition is an all-time low. Places are closing. Rents are going down. Equipment's going to be available. Restaurant spots that were never open will be open. There will be buildings that will be sold for too little money. There will be all that. So it's all about paying attention to how to win at the game you're playing, at the time you're playing, on the field you're playing, with the rules you're playing. So that's why the important thing to do is start now with your business planning and marketing planning. So that way there you can grow in the modern day environment. And then be realistic, but don't be afraid to reach. So it's cool to have real high goals, but make sure that when you look at your goals, you can actually realize them, not in the aspect of, you know, like somebody like mom saying, it's okay if you feel short, blah, 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 but more in the aspect of quantify those numbers. If you say, I want to sell a hundred houses, break it out to that 8.6 and say to yourself, okay, on average, I take in a hundred leads, which leads to 10 appointments, which leads to 8.6 sales really break the number down, really look at it, get into it, get deep into it and think about that because that's going to give you the key concepts to how you create your budget. Because if a lead costs you 10 cents a lead, you need a hundred of them. It's a pretty easy math equation, right? It's going to be 10 bucks. If you just say, okay, I need a hundred leads and you got no idea how much they cost. And then the next thing you know, the conversion and everything you realize and the cost per acquisition of a customer is $25 and the product you're selling is you know $23. You're already at a massive loss before you've even tried to grow your business. So be realistic is important. Looking at the numbers for real is important and be willing to reach a little bit when it comes to pushing yourself because without pushing yourself, you probably will not reach high goals. Next up, be willing to look at what others are doing. So lots of different ways to do this. You know, um, one of the things that happened with Congress when Mark Zuckerberg got in trouble with them the last time he got in trouble for the Russian collusion stuff was it came out that they wanted people to have more transparency to what goes on on ads. This isn't just on their platform, it's many places, but you want to look at what your major competitors are running for ads, especially if you have somebody that's a big in your industry, you can look at certain ads and say, they've been running this one for five years. Nobody runs an ad for five years that doesn't work, right? So we obviously know that for certain places, such as like maybe the caveman can do a thing, right? We know that obviously the caveman sold a lot of insurance because they would not be still randomly beating the caveman drum. Now, am I saying your insurance company should create a caveman? Probably not. You probably have to create your own thing. But watching how they executed it, where they placed the ads, when they placed the ads, how they placed the ads, why was comical relief so important in the ads? Breaking that part of it down, not saying like, okay, I just need to get myself a Yeti and I'm going to be good or something close to a caveman, right? No, don't do that. But look at the overall of how and why they did what they did, especially the whens, when they're posting, where they're posting it. Those are huge. Like if you see like all your competitors are in golf magazine, Maybe you don't go in golf magazine because you don't need to be national, but you certainly maybe want to go over and look at how to get yourself on the bottom of some of the different field cards for keeping score. Maybe that's what the best bet is. I don't know. You have to look at your industry, but knowing where your competitors are, most of the time, the majors, the real big players in a the game, they've spent money on having a company come in and do market research. So paying attention to that is important. Well, I'm not telling you to just completely do exactly what they're doing. I think knowing what they're doing is going to help you grow. Next up, so map out your path. Don't be afraid to dream while mapping out your marketing plan, right? So like I said, you know, it's okay to push. You just got to know where to push to, but it's okay to dream. Like one of the most important concepts that most people don't understand of entrepreneurship, right? So a normal person, they don't make decisions, right? They just go to work and they do their thing. And when they make decisions, they're very simple decisions and they usually A or B type decisions, right? Not a lot of weight to them, not a lot there. And that is where they get into the 40 hour myth, which is working for 40 hours to make a living. 
and thinking that that's going to be suffice, right? That you go to some work for 40 hours and that they should owe you at least $100,000 so you can have a boat, a kid, a car, and a house. No truth to it whatsoever. And then there's other people who don't understand wealth creation. They don't understand actual wealth creation, not taking in money, but actually creating wealth. So you have this thing in your head called a brain or you, you know, mind, body, however you see it, but you have this ability to create something that was never here. And that ability to create something that is never here is where exponential growth and exponential earning happen. Simply inventing an invention is going to get you money, not at 40 hours a week, but every time that unit sells. We are inventing our marketing plan. We are inventing how we're going to market and we're inventing what we're going to do. An entrepreneur is no different than an inventor, but we invent all day long. When your staff comes to you as an entrepreneur, you're the business owner, they ask you what to do. They don't say, hey, um, you know, thanks, and I'm going to just tell you what we're going to do. They say, please let me know what to do, whether it be your creative people to whoever they need that guidance from you, the person who is mapping out the path. So making sure you dream a bit, big time, gonna help you out. I do a lot of it in my car, I'm driving around, just kind of thinking spacey and just letting my brain run. And that's where I come up with a lot of my ideas that I'm gonna do for business. So the more clear you make your message, the better results your marketing will have. This one's important to remember that, you know, if things are confusing, people won't do it. So most businesses, we have one thing that's going to make us grow more than any other thing. And identifying that and clarifying your message to that is going to help out big time. Trying, say you're an ice cream shop and instead of advertising one thing, you're just like, come in and have uh, rainbow yogurt, come in and have sorbet, come in and have, and you, every day it's just a different message. People will kind of get lost. Like, do they sell sorbets or ice cream? Do they sell ice cream or fraps or drinks or coffees or teas. People will find your other products. People will find your other services, but understanding what brings in the majority is what you want to market. Because again, back to that salt and pepper shaker, trying to find those leads just by general broad spectrum marketing, you're not going to find the leads, right? You're going to get people confused versus having it always be a direct message to come in and do X, Y, Z, you know, for real estate agents, it's trying to find listings, right? You really want to sell people's houses because when you're selling people's houses, buyers are going to reach out to you to buy that house. When you work with a buyer versus a seller, you're working with a buyer, you're out there driving for one person, you're running around with that one person and you're trying to help them buy a house. They may give you a referral. They may end up buying from you or selling with you in the future, but it's a one-for-one -one type of transaction where when you get a listing, the listing works for you. The listing has a sign out front. The listing has a lot of different opportunities for you. So every business has this. It's just about figuring out what it is. Figuring out, is it the pizza that drives your restaurant? Is it the, the burger? Whatever it is, figuring out a way to benefit off that and making a clear message and a clear call to action so people can find the path to the success with you as a business. So, <clears throat> excuse me, let's talk about some marketing avenues. There's a lot of them out there. Lots of different ways to get to people. All of them have good results, every single one of them. So those of you naysayers out there that are reading through this list right now and saying that one is stupid or another is stupid, it may be for your business. It may not be exactly what you want to be doing. It may not be exactly what your style company needs. But that said, there's a reason there's advertisers in all of them. And there's a reason that all of them make good money off of selling their ads because advertisement works. It's about being where it works. You wouldn't see companies spend all the money they do on things if they weren't getting returns and they weren't measuring them. Sometimes, of course, yeah, there is some, you know, frivolous companies out there that just kind of throw it all at the board when they got big money and they hope something sticks. But typically it's best to figure out what marketing avenues work best for you. So let's read them down. So social media, direct mail, outbound calls, lead funnels, geofencing, billboards, radio, TV, YouTube, AdWords, product sampling, newspaper, events, sponsorships, 
coupons, email marketing, content marketing. So let's just talk a little bit about a couple of them. So social media is pretty easy, you know, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, all that. Very important to be doing for a lot of businesses, but also looking at what impression rate you have, what conversion rate you have, and making sure that you're not just throwing money just to be cool on social media. Direct mail. Direct mail is a great way to get at people. The more personalized you can make it, the better. But obviously everything from grocery circulars to whatever, they go out through it. Direct mail used to be really, really, really bad, but spam on the computer emails kind of took over most of it. So it's not as thick in the mailbox anymore. If you do it right, you can really get a good result. Outbound calls. So lead generation, right? So for real estate agents, we need to be making outbound calls. For people who work in consulting, you need to be making outbound calls. For people who work in any type of agency setting, outbound calls are a must. But some people, you know, like I've never been called by the supermarket and said like, hey, do you need some bread? They, they don't do that, right? So knowing which ones work for your industry is big. Lead funnels. Lead funnels are when you send people from different websites or from different social medias and ads to a place where you're asking for the contact information and then you're using things like UTMs and pixels to put into their computer so that you can do what they call retargeting and marketing to them at a later date pushing them back to that funnel until eventually they fill in their name, phone number, email address, whatever information you're looking for, and then you reach out to them. Geofencing, geofencing's become more popular over the years. It's just the idea of, you know, where a cell phone is based on location data, based on the apps they have on their phone. You don't personally know whose phone it is or what phone it is, but you know that this person happens to like these things and you're able to display an ad on their phone through different apps and places like that. Billboards, an old standby, really popular in the South, slightly popular up here, but I think you'll see more and more billboards as your life goes on. Billboards work, they're really expensive. So knowing if you're going to get your message across clearly and how you're going to recapitalize off of it, very important. Lots of them are multiple thousands of dollars. And oftentimes they, now that they're digital, they sell between eight and 10 spaces on that billboard. So you're actually revolving for only less than 10 seconds a minute. So keeping that in mind that you need a clear message and you need a clear way that you're gonna capitalize off of it. Billboards are really great for events. They're really great for certain things like, you know, breaking into a town as a new company and just wanting everybody to know. But when it comes to the day-to-day, -day, it's hard for a lot of businesses to figure out where to work them in. Radio, it's still big, you know? People listen to the radio all day long. And do little spots. Just remember with radio or TV, there's no point in buying one spot. It needs to be consistent, needs to be going for probably the better part of a half a year. If it doesn't, you will not get the stickiness, especially with radio, TV. If you're a real estate agent or you're working in an agency type business and you're just trying to get your face across TV, they see you. Radio, they just hear the little jingle. You know, um, there's a lot of little jingles out there that we can all remember when it comes to glass companies, when it comes to different people that have run those ads repetitively, but you know, because they run it all the time. YouTube, very nice for advertising. Um, lots of localized things. If you're looking to get people in, you're able to see where people are viewing as far as you can't see who it is, but you can get it to the right people. So that's a really great one. Lots of little short video ads really work out great. Get people to your site, you can end up selling a lot. AdWords through Google and other places where you're paying for paid advertisement to show up at the top. They're great, just be careful. There are things like bots out there and stuff that can spend a big budget really quickly. Monitor your budget, monitor your results, make sure to hook it up to your Google Analytics, make sure to watch who's making it through that and make sure that your customer acquisition cost stays at a normal level. Product sampling, obviously do a lot of that at food, BJ's, places like that. Uh, product sampling is also common in energy drinks, things like that. Getting people something that they consider slightly too expensive to randomly roll the dice on, getting it at once, hoping that they will get hooked on it. Newspaper, very popular. Obviously, you got to know your spot in the newspaper and what newspaper, depending on what you're trying to get across, can work. Events, big time. Events are very good for all different types of companies. Everybody should be throwing different types of events, but knowing how to make a successful event is important. Sponsorship, anything from like putting t-shirts on the back of kids playing sports all the way to the idea of sponsoring large sports teams or clubs or anything else like that. You want to think, how am I going to get my money back on this? Unless you're doing it for charity purposes, like the little kids teams. A lot of times that's more of a, you know, thank you for being a local citizen. than uh, I'm going to get a lot of business. 
Next up, coupons. Coupons are great, but just don't give away too much of your money. Um, I don't know why anybody is ever on Groupon. It's 50%, usually basically a Groupon, it's like 50% of the money for the buying it through Groupon and then Groupon takes 50% of the money. So why not just mail out a 75% off coupon because it's about the same result. I know you probably shouldn't do it. So that tells you that Groupon is probably not a good idea. If you have a business like a yoga business or something where you don't mind giving away the first lesson because you know they're going to come back repeat, then that's a place where it is. And coupons are really great for repeat business when you do it right. Maybe you give them a cheap pizza the first time or whatever, but just remember that it's real money and would you throw out that much money? Email marketing, do it right. Don't just spam people. Pay attention to what people are unsubscribing for. Build out great email marketing campaigns and watch them. Content marketing. Content marketing goes along the lines of writing almost like op-eds and stuff where you're actually giving great content and details on something, educating people, letting them know information that'll help them grow and not realizing, you know, we wrote a guide, everything Duxbury guide. We just gave out tons of great information on Duxbury, proving that we were a real estate company that understood the town. We really didn't get much out of it when it comes to the idea of like, we're not saying directly buy from us. We were just giving them content that we know they'll go back to, they'll like, they'll trust, and then they'll build a relationship with us, the business. All right. So next up, we have implementing your marketing plan. So researching what other people are doing, develop your plan, write down your plan to make it clear, moving forward, implement your plan, check back regularly on your plan, update your plan again implement the changes, repeat steps five through seven with one annual complete audit. So what I mean by this, you need to take each step as you go, you need to pay attention to what you're doing and you need to make it actually happen. So now that you've written the plan, you've developed it and everything, you got it all in writing, it's time to implement it, check on the plan to see how it's working on the regular, maybe monthly, maybe quarterly, depending on your business. As you see problems, you update the plan, you implement the change, and you start back at the same place where you check on the plan, update the plan, implement the change. It's a dynamic, not a static document. Making it dynamic is going to do you a world of good. So in closing statements today, I'd like to say by failing to prepare, you are preparing for failure. If you shoot for the moon and you miss, you're still in the stars. So think about that, right? If you're shooting for big goals and you don't hit it, you're still way up there, right? You're still doing great. So stop beating yourself up so much about, well, what if I don't, what if, start, start today, get moving on it right away. Next up, we've got setting goals, allows you to define your success. Setting a budget keeps you out of financial woes. Watching the metrics saves you from wasting endless money. When in doubt, consult with a pro. So you'll notice what I'm saying is plans help us avoid failure, right? They don't create failure. The failure is the failure to plan. The failure is the failure to implement. The failure is the failure to go. The failure is running out of money because you didn't set a budget. The plan is to keep you on target. So make sure to get a plan. If you don't know what you're doing on marketing, there's great companies locally. I mean, we have Quinnovative Marketing right here in the Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce, Caroline Quinch, love to help you out. I personally, myself, I'm not a marketing expert in the idea of offering plans. But if you're working with my consulting company, do we help you in the idea of setting you up with the right people, the right things? Of course we do. That's part of our job. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'd really like to have you here uh, forever. And, uh, and you know, if you have any other questions, feel free to drop them in the line. Give us a thumbs up. Make sure to throw on the notifications so you don't miss the next one. If you haven't yet, go over to thothcompany.com. That's T-H-O-T-H-C-O-M-P-A-N-Y.com. Jump on there and sign up for the newsletter that'll give you the reminders and a little bit of information about this, as well as at one point, I'm going to be reaching out to everybody and just checking in on how they're liking what we're doing here. So let's go over the months ahead. Meetings every Thursday, 11 a.m. You can get on the Zoom call. Some people do, some people don't. You can jump on the Zoom call. You're welcome to ask questions through the chat bar over there, or the other option is to watch it live on YouTube and also recording on YouTube. So every one that we've finished so far, and I'll read them down, what is a business? Do I have a business or a job? Do I understand delegating tasks? Am I ready to hire? All four of those are already right here on the YouTube channel. 
you can watch them at any time at your own pace. And again, you can ask any questions you have and I will make sure to go back. We just finished up what is a marketing plan. So next week we're gonna be talking about what are KPIs and why do they matter? For those of you who are here today, you understand KPIs. If you do know what it stands for, throw it in the chat bar, but it is key point indicators. So what are these things? We can go way over them, but it's the idea of knowing what to watch in your business to make sure that something doesn't creep up on you called failure. We're going to go over why do we need goals and what is a business plan and why do you need it this month? Um, and not this month as well, but module two. So that actually runs all the way to February. Lots of other great stuff coming up, you guys. Thank you so much for watching today. I'm going to give you my socials right here. That way you can learn where you can follow me. Um, I'm all over the place on the internet. I'm quite busy. But one of the things you'll notice if you check out all the stuff I do, you're a real estate agent, check out Real Facts on Real Estate. Give away so much free information to make money. If you're a homeowner, buyer, seller, check out our podcast, Home Ownership. Give away so much information on how to buy, sell, and own a home. Or just check out all my other channels. I'm always writing blogs. I'm always giving out free information because, again, these two podcasts right here, they're free. They're on every major podcast provider. If you can jump on there, subscribe, tell your friends about it, everything like that. But, again, Real Facts on Real Estate, It's we are – always educating real estate people on how to make more money today. And then home ownership, like I said, you want to buy, own, sell a home, everything from what to do because it's winter time to how to stay at your house, how to accept an offer, how to negotiate, all the different things you need to know to find success in real estate. So last but not least, you want to reach out to me. Here's my personal website, business websites. Feel free to reach out to me directly. Any questions, love to help you guys out. Thank you so much for watching. Happy 400th to the nation. I know we missed 400th in America because remember 2020 from 1620 means that we are 400 years old. So those of you in Plymouth, you know, happy birthday, as they say. We did pass by that year without much mention of it, kind of disappointed by that. But this is a great nation. We are great people, continue to work hard. Don't worry about what the government does. They've always been ugly and weird and doing stupid stuff. Don't worry about it. You, you know, you're never going to correct one of your friends by arguing politics with them. You're better off to coexist, learn that you two both have the same goal, which is freedom, peace, and equality. Everyone have a great afternoon. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate each and every one of you. And if you have any questions, drop them in the bar. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe.